As gamers, we spend our every waking breath searching for any advantage over our foes. The perfect monitor, the perfect keyboard, the perfect headset, the perfect mouse. Ponage Ultra Custom, the most customizable mouse in the world. Yo guys, Jake Bacon here, and this is the lightest, most customizable wireless gaming mouse in the world, the Ponage Ultra Custom. Now, before I received this mouse, I was using both the Logitech G703 for gaming and the Logitech MX Master 3 for productivity. Well, I think the Ultra Custom might be the perfect mouse for me, and since I'm sick of working and just want to pwn noobs as easily as possible, I don't think I'm gonna be needing these anymore. What? You're crazy if you thought I'd really throw these with no protection. Now, full disclosure, I did want to mention that Ponage did send me over this mouse for review, but I've been using this mouse for about two months now, and that in no way sways my opinion on this thing. And if you have trypophobia, you might want to click away now. Okay, well, if you're still here, let's do a quick rundown on the specs, and this baby has got it all. Super lightweight at only 58 grams, which is insane for a wireless mouse. When I first took this thing out of the box, I definitely thought that the batteries were not even in it yet, but they were. And it has USB charging, which is a very welcome addition. I just don't understand why even some of the top most expensive gaming mice still don't have USB-C. But the MX Master 3 does, but my G703 and many other high-end gaming mice only have micro USB. In addition to this charging, this mouse, you can use it in wired mode, and that paracord is very good quality. It's super lightweight and flexible, and really with the mouse plugged in, it still feels like there's no cable there. It has an amazing sensor, RGB lighting, PTFE mouse feet, and the defining feature, you can customize this thing to your heart's content. And they actually sent me over a bunch of the different colored shells as well, so I'm gonna be going over all of those and how those look as well. But before you even think about picking up this mouse, you should be thinking about hitting that subscribe button for more content like this, massaging the like button until it starts to sizzle and ringing the bell for that sweet, sweet smell of bacon in your inbox. So when you get this mouse, the packaging is actually decently premium. With a name like Ponage Ultra Custom, you might be expecting something super gamery, but the box is actually pretty tame and clean. Basically, you get the mouse, the cable, and wireless adapter, and two different DPI button options in different heights and two different top shell options. So you can choose if you would rather have more solid look rather than the honeycomb look or vice versa. This does add a slight bit of weight though. And right now, I'm honestly not sure if this is a promotional thing or how long they're gonna be doing this for, but right now, if you buy the black version of this mouse, you get the bonus white set, and that includes a white button cover, DPI button, and top cover shell. And if you get the white version, you get the bonus black set as well. Super cool. I also love that when it's white, everything is white. Unlike Logitech and some other brands where it's basically just black and white, and if you don't change the shells to another color, the whole thing is completely white, including the paracord and the USB dongle. And when it's black, everything is black. The only weird thing is that the part that you connect to the cable into and the USB dongle into is black. Hopefully they will change this in the future for the white version, but it all is just super clean. The mouse is shorter overall than my Logitech G703 at 119 millimeters long, and it is relatively close in height, but the bump is in a different spot. On the Ponage Ultra Custom, it is closer to the middle, and the bump on the G703 is closer to the back. For me, with my bigger hands and my kind of hybrid palm and claw grip, I think having the bump towards the back fits my hand shape slightly more. But I think the Ponage will fit the majority of people better, and the rest of the mouse more than makes up for that for me. I mean, it's still super comfortable. I did mention 58 grams for weight earlier, but really with the smooth shell, the mouse is closer to 72 grams, and the honeycomb shell is closer to 70 grams. But the thing is, it's still incredibly light. They do say you can also take off the shell and play that way if you want, but for me, that is a little excessive. But if you want to get this as light as possible, it's cool that that's an option. Without the shell, it came in at about 66 grams. Now, if you just wanna run this wired, you can remove the battery as well to get it down to 58 grams, but I don't know if they actually recommend this and they just release a wired version. So if you're gonna be doing that, I would say just go for the wired version, it's cheaper. So if you wanna customize this mouse, not only do you have the different shell options, but you have many different colors as well. Right here, I have the lighter pink color, red, 
teal, and blue, which they all come with a smooth and honeycomb shell. DPI button and triggers, and they also come in neon pink, purple, green, yellow, and orange. Pretty much anything you would need to match the majority of setups. And all the pieces are easy to remove. Just remove the top shell, triggers, and DPI button. Super easy. Here's a couple different color combinations. color would you guys go with? I'm honestly really liking this mint, white, and red colorway, and it matches my setup perfectly. I personally love the honeycomb shells the most because not only do you get the weight benefits, but I think being able to see inside of the internals of the mouse is actually awesome as well. The RGB on this mouse I also think is a nice touch and looks clean without being too overbearing. There's actually a button on the bottom of the mouse that lets you change it to off or wired mode, and if you want it on with RGB lighting or no RGB lighting. I thought that was a super nice and convenient touch. And <laughs> no, I know what you guys are thinking because I've already seen some comments on this, but no, unless you are a weird sweaty pig, you aren't going to be sweating into the mouse and damage it. That's just gross, bro. So to match my bacon setup, I went with the red and white for now. Let me know in the comments if you guys want a full setup tour. A lot has changed since my last setup tour, which you can actually check out here after this video. And make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. There's going to be links in the description right below the like button. I love talking with you guys over there, so come on by. I'll also leave a link so you guys can pick up this mouse in the description as well. Now compared to my G703, the triggers do take a little bit more force and have a longer pre-travel before activating, but in actual use, I don't really notice it. The side buttons are also slightly more squishy, but they're plenty big and they still feel crisp enough. If you've seen Bad Seed Tech's review on this mouse, he does mention that you can push the side buttons all the way into the body and they won't come back out. But this must have actually been fixed on the production model because you can't do this on mine. I also prefer the scroll wheel over the G703. It has LEDs that indicate battery life, and when scrolling, it's pretty much silent. It's easier to press than the G703 as well, which I definitely prefer. There is some slight creaking when pressing on the sides of the mouse, but in actual use, you wouldn't be doing that, and you have to consider that this mouse still feels super solid, even though the, basically the whole thing easily comes apart. I'm definitely impressed with the build quality here. Now, one con I've noticed is that the sides can get slippery, but they do have these rubber side grips that you can purchase for only $5 if you need them. They only have black right now though, so I really hope that they come out with a white version or multiple colorways. It would be also be super sick if they would make like a version that has cutouts in it for the honeycomb. But for now, I'm fine with leaving them off of it. It's just something that could possibly be an issue with intense gaming sessions for some people. The sensor they're using is the PAW3335 optical sensor with zero smoothing or acceleration and can be adjusted from 200 to 16,000 DPI. And I can't tell the difference between it and the logic Tech G703 sensor. It's very accurate and a great performer, and the wireless tech they're using is great as well. I can't tell any difference latency wise between this and the light speed tech on the G703, which is saying something for sure. However, you can probably tell from these clips that I'm nowhere near being a professional gamer, but I think any highly competitive or pro gamer would be more than thrilled with this mouse. I do wish that you could charge the mouse on the Logitech PowerPlay mat, but that isn't really a con because no mouse can accept Logitechs. It's just something I have gotten used to. Maybe that's something they can do is make their own wireless charging pad in the future. Now the mouse skates are 100% PTFE and honestly glide much, much easier and smoother than the feet on the G703. Check it out. Battery life has been okay, but I would say on par with the most high-end wireless gaming mice that have RGB. They claim 40 hours, which seems accurate as with the lights on, I get about three to four days of use. It does charge pretty quick though, getting a full charge in around one hour. The software is nice, if not a little clunky, but you can change all the settings you expect, like the polling rate, customize what each button does, DPI, sensitivity, macros, and of course, the lighting. And you can save up to four profiles. So really, is this the perfect mouse? Well, nothing is perfect, but the pros really outweigh the cons, and I'm loving this thing so far. The pricing on this right now is $89, and this is cheaper than most of the top tier wireless Logitech or Razer mice, and again, I like this more. 
They also have a wired version on pre-order for only $59. This is a little more than competitors like the Glorious Model O, but it also has way more customization options. The wireless version is also really the only mouse like this I can think of right now. Now, I can't really talk about how long it's gonna hold up for because I haven't had it for that long yet, but the two months that I have had it, I mean, it's been super solid, nothing has broken, nothing has even been close. I mean, it still looks brand new, I would say. But maybe I'll revisit it a few months down the line if you guys want me to. I do still use the MX Master 3 for video editing because of that sweet, sweet horizontal scroll wheel. But other than that, the Ultra Custom has been my daily driver. With it being so light, the super smooth skates and all the customization options, I think I'm going to be using this mouse for a very, very long time. All right. If you guys liked it, go ahead and like the video. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe for more. And always remember, in bacon we trust. Peace.